Hi everyone and welcome to Class VR, bringing the world into your classroom. I am Chandra Martz and I am a digital teaching and learning specialist in Canyon School District. Um, just as a reminder, as you're watching this, make sure that you're being committed, responsible, respectful, and that you are being safe. So take care of what you need to. If you need to pause it and come back at any time, feel free to do so. Um, for Class VR, we are focusing on explicit instruction and maximizing opportunities to respond. Our goals for today is learning intention is that I am learning how to use Class VR so I can bring the world into my classroom in an engaging way. My success criteria for today is that I will know I'm successful when I can access the Class VR website um, for PD, also access the um, Class VR through Destiny to be able to check it out. Um, access the Class VR portal to be able to access the available content, create playlists, load the content onto the VR headsets, and provide meaningful experiences for your students. Um, so we have a lot to pack into this half hour, so we're going to get started. Um, first of all, know that there is um, basically two pieces of um, technology when we are talking about Class VR. The first one is the actual class VR. Those are the headsets that you see that um, most teachers are gonna use most commonly. Those headsets can be checked out through Destiny and I'll show you that in just a second, but there are two sets of them. There is class VR headset one um, that has 32 devices on it and that's primarily for our elementary folk. Um, and then we've got our set two that has 40 devices and we did that so secondary has enough devices to be able to use in their classrooms. Um, the second piece that we're looking at is Eduverse. Eduverse is a way that you can look at the explorable scenes without having the headsets. So Eduverse could be good if, for example, you can't get access to the headsets, or if you have students that may not be able to use the headsets but still wanna be able to access the um, views, you could take them into Eduverse and give them opportunities to still participate even though they're not able to look through those headsets. So how are we accessing the class VR? We'll go into that piece first. First of all, I'm teaching you how to use the class VR headsets today, but if at any time you wanna go back and watch um, it in a little bit more depth, you can come to this class VR um, online course and it is a PD course that you can go through that will break it down piece by piece for you. Um, you can do that um, by getting the username and password from your field tech. Um, usernames, if you're planning on using set one, is here, but you will need to ask your um, field tech for the password. You can watch the basic and advanced. Those two are gonna be the ones that help you the most. I know there's one that's called setup, but when you are looking at the setup, and I'll go into it so I can show you. Um, let's see, is this one right here. Um, so once you get logged in up on the top right hand corner, it will take you into here. And I know there is one called setting up your class VR, but um, that is not gonna help you actually set them up the way that you're thinking. That is the, on the back end, which we've already done for you. So the ones that you're gonna be watching are the basics and you could even go into this advanced, that greater depth. Um, the other ones, not so much. There is an Eduverse, but it doesn't really talk you through it. So I would um, suggest coming back to this bite-sized PD if you need help with Eduverse. Anyway, going back. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is learn the PD of it. Learn how to use the equipment. The second thing is you're going to want to make sure that you check them out via Destiny. So you can go to Destiny. You can visit Destiny by going. Um, I'm just going to take you to the equipment checkout so you can see what that looks like really quick. Okay, here it's going to teach you how to check that check it out. But basically, you're going to go to destiny.canyonsdistrict.org. You're going to pick your school. Um, so for the sake of this, I'm going to use Albion and I'm going to log in. I will log in with my credentials. Once you log in, you should be able to go to um, more up here, click on that back office. 
from back office, you should be able to click on the catalog. Make sure that Canyons District Media Center is checked and then search for Class VR. When you search for Class VR, you should be able to, um, there should be the two sets available. You can click on the set that you want and then you can click on the book it button. When you click on the book it button, you'll be able to see which days are available and you can check them up to, out for up to 10 days at a time. So maybe I wanna check them out in February. I could say that I wanna check them out starting the 5th and that I and then it will automatically put those 10 days in there. If you want them for less time, you can always change it to the dates that you actually do want it. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and click on the save button. Notice it says that it is going to ship it to the patron's site. So that means that it's going to come um, to you through the warehouse. We'll pick it up from our district office and deliver it to you. So that is checking out the devices. I'm going to bring it back to our slideshow here. Um, bring it back to the slideshow. So that's step two is checking out the devices. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is request um, the account password from your field tech. So again, the username is going to stay the same as it is over here, and you can ask your field tech for the password. The PD password is going to be different than the password for um, the actual devices. This one is going to change quite frequently where the class VR, um, um, PD site is going to stay the same. From here, you're able to log in to the Class VR website. And I will show you how to do that in just a second. So what we're going to do now is we are going to walk through a demo of the Class VR website. That is our step four from the previous slide. I wanted to show you the different pieces. So um, inside of Class VR, there are um, different things that you can look at in order to add the content. The first one is class VR. Those are going to be like your 360 images and videos. You're also going to have some 3D models. And if you are familiar with Google Expeditions, basically what they did is they took all of those expeditions and they put them into um, what they call class VR. So it's not going to have a lot of interaction, but students would be able to look up, down, left and right in a 360 view. Community is kind of nice because it has playlists that have been created by other Class VR users. Um, I'll show you those in just a second. Advantis World is um, more interactive as it is Eduversity. Um, and those two allow you to actually have the students use the joystick to move around in the environment. Um, so Advantis World and Eduversity. Both of them have, um, well, Eduversity more so, has lesson plans that are provided for you um, that you can use. So let's go into Class VR really quick and let's walk through it. So when you go to classvr.com, um, you'll click on the login button. You'll put in your username and password that are given to you by the field tech and you will click on the sign in button. When you click on sign in, you're going to see something very similar to this. Over on the right-hand side are your playlists, okay? Um, and all of the subscriptions that we subscribe to currently. So what you can do is um, move content over to this left-hand side. That is the playlist that your students will actually see. So options that you could do is you could look in the My Playlists. My Playlists are playlists that other people from around Canyons that have used that set before uh, may have used and saved. So for example, I have a, where is it at? This set one demo. Um, this is what I use when I just wanna show people how cool our sets are. Um, when you find a playlist that you want, you could click on it and drag it over. Notice content shows up over here. Another thing that you can do, again, is I mentioned that they have the um, community playlists. So these are all playlists, like I said, that other people have created that you may be interested in. Um, you can search for them if there's something that you are interested in looking for. Um, otherwise, you can just kind of scroll through and see what's available. Um, 
and that's available, an option for you. Um, if you're looking for something more specific, you can go into class VR. And like I said, those are the, the old Google expeditions that allow you to look up, down, left, and right. So I can look through, kind of see what I want to look at. Uh, maybe I want to go into history. And I can go in and notice that when I see my history, so for example, American history, I could see that there are 10 tracks. So from here, I could click into it and be like, oh, I think that these ruins in New Mexico might be good for me. I could put that in. Um, and it's basically, if you click on it, it's going to give you a screenshot over here. It may give you some teacher notes, but notice that there's not really lesson plans attached to it. Okay, I would skip co-spaces. We don't have accounts for that one. Unless you are a specialized um, teacher in high school, you probably won't have accounts for that. Advantis World Theme Park is, one, is pretty cool. When you go into it, you can um, look at the different pieces. Right now they have um, four different worlds that you can go into, engaging Earthland, literacy, super science, and a trip through time. When you click on those, you can go into them and look further. So for example, maybe I wanna look at this age of exploration and now I'd be able to see the different pieces that are available here. So maybe I am interested in, um, I don't know, the Black Death. I can come into it, click into it. Now, notice that these have more of your um, questions. They've got lesson plans that go along with it. You can actually kind of start to see what this looks like. And then if you decide it's what you want, you can click on it and drag it in. I would highly suggest not dragging more than 10 tracks at a time. Otherwise, it's going to take a really, really long time for it to load. I also want you to notice that with our class VR, this one was about a 3.1 megabyte, where this one is a 45.5 megabyte. So this one's going to take a lot longer to load onto the student headsets than something like this one. Um, our other option is Eduversity. Eduversity basically was built during COVID times. And what it does is it creates um, a place that kids could actually go on and communicate with each other. These seem to work a little bit better with um, Eduverse, but um, they have been added to the class VR. Um, some things that are cool about it is that if you wanted to and just have kids sitting next to each other in like a Spanish class, you could go in or a French class or whatever. I'm going to go into French because I found it faster. Um, you could go in here and um, have them talk to each other in a different environment than they normally would. Um, and those are just kind of fun for them to walk through and look around. Um, like I said, though, I think most of your learning is going to probably occur in this Advantis world and how you use your class VR. Um, I haven't played with world events much. Um, but it looks like there's not much in it right now. But what you could do is maybe you um, are trying to look for something specific, but you don't know where to find it. You could come to this search feature and then you can search for, for example, Romeo and Juliet. If I search for Romeo, now I have Romeo and Juliet information here. I've got a Advantis world that I could pull in. I've got the Romeo and Juliet. Okay, and when I click on that, it's going to have screenshots of what it looks like. If you want to look at it closer, you can more uh, you can go into Eduverse, which I will show you next. But once you're like, yeah, that's pretty cool. I think I'm going to use that. You can bring that in over here onto your left hand side. When you decide that these are what you want to show your students, you can go in and click on the deliver feature. Any devices that are turned on, which they have to be turned on to receive the content, are going to show up here under your either active or connected. Active means that they are actively being used in that moment, while connected means that they are going to, um, they may be in the box turned on, but they are not actively being used at that moment. So to be able to share, you're going to click on your session and you're going to click on the unlock. Now I can do one of two things. The first thing I can do is I could technically just click on one of these, okay? And I can hit the play button. 
when I hit the play button, it is going to force any devices that are currently using it to just see it. This can be good and bad. Um, good because now you're able to control what the students see um, in real time right off the bat. What's bad about it is remember that some devices may load faster or slower than others. So some students may not be able to receive the content as fast as others, which could cause behavior problems, et cetera. Um, so what I prefer to do is hit this send button. Um, you're not able to control what the students are looking at at the moment, but you are able to save all of the things on the playlist onto that device. So anything that was there prior will disappear and anything that you have in that playlist is going to currently show up on those devices. You are gonna to wanna to do this in advance. I would probably suggest doing it the day before um, and just um, pressing the play button, or I mean the send button right here. When you send that content over, what's gonna happen is you're gonna see a green line that's going across, going across, going across. When it hits all the way to the end and disappears, that's when you know the content's there. Like I said, it's going to put the content on any devices that are in the active or connected modes. And the last thing that you could do is if you're planning on using it with one class and then you want different content for a second class and then you want to come back to that content for a class, what you could do is click on the um, save button. When you click on this save button, it's going to take that playlist and it's going to ask you um, to save it as a new playlist. So then you would be able to save it. I'm just going to save it as delete me. Um, and then you would be able to click on save playlist. So that is the basics of using the content. I'm just going to remind you really quick on how to do it one more time. So I'm going to come over to my plan. I am going to come to um, whichever one or I can search using search descriptions. So I can come find what content I want. I can click on it and drag it over. Okay, notice this has eight tracks. If I went into it itself, I could click on one or um, one or more and drag them over. And then I would want to um, come to my deliver and I'd want to send the content over to do, have it delivered to my devices. Okay, I am going to go back out of that now. Um, and that is my walkthrough. Looking at my next thing, okay, how do I use the headsets? The headsets um, can, are will all come in these boxes. There will be eight headsets to a box. Um, on the inside, when you first receive the device, you're going to have um, the cord that will be in here and you will be able to plug it in. Once it is plugged in, you'll be able to turn it on and that's how the headsets will start charging. When the headsets turn green on the little dot on them, um, you will know that they are fully charged. To turn them on, you are going to be able to take the headset out of the box and you're going to find on the bottom of the headset, there is a power button. Hold that power button down for about five to 10 seconds. And if you look through it, you're gonna see like an infinity symbol. That is the symbol for class VR. And that's how you know that it is turning on. If it takes a little while or turns itself back off, what that means is that it is trying to do an update. No need to do anything. It's gonna do its update on its own, probably take a minute or two, and then you'll be able to do the content like needed. Okay, let's take a look at the Eduverse website. This is where you're going to be able to see what content you're actually putting on the devices. So when I go to Eduverse, it's eduverse.com, and I'm going to be able to click on the Eduverse button. When I click on the Eduverse button, it's gonna take me into a homeroom. This will allow me to see a few things, but not very many. So what I can do is I can come down to the bottom right, I can click on the sign in button, and I will be able to sign in using the account information that was provided to me by my field tech. Once I've signed in, now I'm gonna have more access to content. So 
So what I can do is I can come down here on the bottom left-hand side and click on my explore button. When I explore, I'll be able to go in and either search for content, scroll through, or be able to click on the different pieces. Um, so Expeditions 360, Ediversity, Advantage World, or World Events. So I'm just going to go back and I can look through and click on any of them that I need to. So uh, maybe I just want to go in and look at um, let me go into Advantage World. Maybe I want to look in and see, because my class is reading A Tale of Two Cities. I could go in and click on A Tale of Two Cities. I'll click on the Join Room. And it's going to give me, the first time I use it, some instructions. And then I have, um, I'm able to go and look through it um, using my keys. So I can click and drag and look around that way. I can move forward and back. Notice that some rooms are actually open where you would be able to go inside of them. And you would be able to look around inside of that room. Um, once you're done, you can click and go back to explore to explore more. But one cool feature um, that you could use on here is this hall pass. When you use this hall pass, you now get a um, website URL that you could actually share with your students. So I'm just gonna copy this. Let me go into an incognito window really quick. And when I paste it in here, I am as if I was a student now, that student should now have access to Eduverse with the activity that you provided them. So what you could do is maybe inside of a canvas or something, if you wanted them to look at multiple things, you could put multiple links to this. Those kids could join the room and then they would be able to look around just as if um, you were doing it with them on the class VR headsets. So again, Eduverse, you can look if you want something specific, for example, a frog, I could search for it. Um, here's some frogs that I could look at. I could click on those, it would bring it in. And now I have the anatomy of a frog that is loading that I would be able to um, look around it. So anyway, that is Eduverse. Let me go back to my slideshow. Okay, in this Google Drive, I have added resources that you can go and look at. Um, one that you may be um, wanting to look at is this Class VR resources. And inside of there, actually has all of the activities, not all, a lot of them. They're usually adding about two to three a month. So this um, is probably from last year. So there's more since then, but you should be able to see a lot of the activities. When you look at the orange, those are gonna be images. They're 360 images. When you um, keep scrolling down, you're gonna have your 360 videos that you could search for, your 3D models. Okay, and then you're gonna get into your Eduverse and your um, Advantis, and those are going to be like your those lesson plan, the ones that have lesson plans or AR, um, the augmented reality that you're able to walk through and be able to explore different scenes. So anyway, they, that one is going to help you a lot as you are trying to decide which ones that you would like to use. Um, I think that is all that I have. Let's look. Um, so again, the learning intentions are that you are going to use Class VR in an engaging way, and then you're going to be able to access the Class VR um, PD site, um, download them and check or check them out through Destiny, log in and access the content, create your playlist, load the content to the VR headsets, and 
in the end, provide those meaningful experiences to your students. I do want to remind you that as you are um, creating those meaningful experiences, you are still the teacher, you are still the facilitator. So while Class VR is a fun tool that you can use, you're still the one guiding those in, um, discussions. You're still the ones that are bringing up what you want those kids learning and how they're going to learn that. Um, one thing I do want to remind you of uh, as well is when you're using the headsets, um, kids get dizzy after using the headsets for about three to five minutes. After three to five minutes, some can go up to seven, but you want to have them take off those headsets and have discussions with them frequently. Otherwise, um, they are not going to remember, or sorry, they're not going to remember to take them off and then they're gonna get dizzy and sick. So um, just a reminder, make sure your kids are taking them off regularly. Okay, that is all I have today. Thank you for joining me and I hope you have a great day.